This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. Hello, operator. Give me the number for 911. That may be a valid question. Find out more in the E911 Talk Podcast, episode 118. Recorded Saturday, December 15th, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. We talk about the first 911 call in the United States taking place on February 16, 1969 in Haleyville, Alabama. But we need to look back even further to find the very first emergency call ever made. With the exception of Alexander Graham Bell calling for Watson when he spills battery acid on himself, or so the story goes. As typically the case, it all started with a disaster. It was 1935 when five women died during a fire in Wimple Street in London. Apparently neighbors who had to dial zero to ask for the operator for police, fire or ambulance found that the telephone operator switchboard had been jammed with calls and weren't able to get through. The General Post Office, which ran the telephone network in London, decided that a new three-digit number could be used to reach emergency services. Additionally, it would be able to trigger specialized alerting that would indicate to the operators the presence of an emergency call. The alerting was accomplished by a flashing light in an audio device called a hooter. I'll give you all a second to finish your childish snickering. All done? Great. So the number that was chosen was 999, and a lot of reasoning went behind that, and there's a great article by the BBC that tells that entire story. As always, you can find a link to that in my blog at www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher. Currently across the European Union member states, 112 is typically recognized as the official emergency number. Although in most places, the legacy numbers are also recognized. One of the problems Europeans experience, according to the European Emergency Number Association, or ENA, is the lack of knowledge of 112 as the EU-wide emergency number, according to recent surveys. Only single-digit percentage growths have been seen over the past five years, with three out of every four European citizens still not aware that they can dial 112 all over Europe. This past month at an International Telecommunications Union conference on UN telecommunications regulations held in Dubai, 193 nations committed to decide between either 911 or 112 as a standard global emergency number for new generations of mobile phones and other devices. Now, if you're going to go that far and actually state one or the other, then in my opinion, it only makes sense to support both. Let's face it, we've invested so much in our 911 education in North America that it would just be counterproductive to change the designated emergency number at this point. The same still holds true in the European Union, where 112 has been highlighted, and even adding in 999 that's popular in London and the United Kingdom. That would limit the list to three, something that's certainly manageable at most levels. Now, PBX and MLTS administrators, in addition to remediating their 911 dialing, should also examine their user base and understand the need to support additional emergency numbers. In the U.S., 911 and 9911 are obvious entries in your emergency dialing tables. But if you find that you have a large employee base that includes folks from Europe, it would be wise to provision 112 and 9112, or even 999 and 9999 as valid dialing patterns in your PBX, something that's easily accomplished. Just make sure that you translate anything that's not 911 to the digits 911, as today's carrier networks are probably not provisioned to recognize 112 or 999 as emergency numbers. Oddly enough, this isn't the case on most cellular networks today. In fact, not only does my iPhone recognize 112 as an emergency number, putting the device in an emergency mode, the carrier translates the 112 numbers to 911, where the network then connects me as if I had dialed 911 myself. Disclaimer. Please take my word on this and do not try this as a test. You'll simply tie up emergency lines with non-emergency traffic, putting additional lives at risk. So as we move forward with new communications technologies and modalities, SIP will be the primary protocol used for transport. Based on this, phone numbers will become less and less relevant, and an endpoint or destination name will replace it. My identity and how to reach me will shift from 908-848-2602 to something more like my email address, FletcherMetavaya.com, which is another reason why routing emergency calls based on telephone numbers is an archaic architecture that just doesn't fit the next generation emergency services model. 
and we have to stop relying on phone numbers as location references. In order to maintain phone number to location correlation, there's far too much automation, complexity, and expense associated with that. Moving forward based on this thinking, emergency services calling will be able to migrate to simply SOS as an emergency destination address, and location information will be conveyed in the Pitaflow location object that's already in the SIP header. Once that problem is solved, Homer can start working on a real problem. I have misplaced my pants. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all of you a safe, happy, and healthy holiday of your choice. And I greatly appreciate your support and interest in fixing the emergency number problems in your MLTS PBX systems. As well as those of you in the 911 industry itself, I'd like to thank you for all that you do. Although I'm not a 911 frequent flyer, I've had enough incidents over the past couple of years to personally appreciate the personal sacrifices you make and the dedication that you give to your jobs. Next week, I'll be taking off for the holidays, but I'll go through the 120 podcasts and special reports over the last two years and post the most popular episode. We'll see you back live on Friday, December 28th, where we'll do a 2012 year-end wrap-up. Until then, take care, enjoy your families, and once again, have a safe and happy holiday. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. This is the Avaya Podcast Network, APN.